Welcome to the Men's Health uh, Question and Response Q&R. And now these questions that I'm going to be answered are going to be censored because certain things can't be talked about. Um, and I'm going to try and do the best so that we can keep this on YouTube. The, um, we're going to do some uncensored questions where I can speak freely uh, on our site. Uh, this one's from Nadia Zoe 1111. Good afternoon, doctor. Why is it so hard for most men to talk about their health or even ask help when it comes uh, to their health. I, I got to tell you, uh, Nadia, this is a big deal. Um, and it's, it's tough because men are supposed to be strong. We're supposed to be sensitive. Um, we need to have that balance. And self-help okay, is, is challenging for the traditional male. Now, and this is what I'm trying to do with all of these videos to educate and to open up some taboo subjects because we're, you know, our colonies were started by a bunch of Puritans and we still have certain things that aren't socially acceptable or, or haven't been. Like when I went to Catholic school, we talked about the nether region. Okay, We didn't even mention anything down there. Of course, now society, the pendulum has swung completely the opposite way um, where it's not healthy for society either. Um, and it's been a common standing joke of men asking for directions, men assembling things out of a box without looking at the directions, you know, and having a few extra parts. What do we call that? We remodeled it. <laughs> no, but, you know, it, the, the, the key is, is to have people look at their health. And plus, it's scary. I mean, if you had family members die of heart attacks or cancers or prostate issues or had surgeries, and you start to feel those, those either deficits or signs or symptoms, you want to internalize that and solve the problem because that's the basic mindset of a man is to solve the problem. This is where one of the biggest problems in communication with men and women. Women want to talk and reveal their opening, or their, their, their feelings and feel that they've been heard. When men are listening to that, they typically want to solve the problem instead of passively listening. And, and understanding that, that the female of our species really wants to um, share their feelings and they're not basically looking for solutions a lot of the time. And so if a man is presented with pain, symptoms, dysfunction, he's going to internalize that and try and find the solution. That's why, thank God, some of these videos are out there to where we can answer questions okay, that men can have. And when, when I'm going over a man's x-rays, and, and I can see that there's pelvic dysfunction. I can see there's bunion uh, deformation. And I can tell him that, that look, this is going to um, cause pelvic floor dysfunction. This could be bowel and bladder control. It could be sexual function. And, and this, you can see the men have like a relief, like, oh, finally, I don't need to tell someone that. I don't need to internalize that. There's an actually mechanical and, and solution for the symptoms that he's experiencing. So um, it is something for men to get in touch with their feelings, okay, to get in touch with their body and to do it with confidence. And it's, it's just a little clip into uh, a man's psyche. And I, I was raised by a single mom with three older sisters. I'm not saying that I have an insight into, into the feminine psyche whatsoever. But I was raised by very, very tough, strong um, Italian contractors, okay? And uh, Larry Owens is one of my greatest friends and mentors, and he was a man's man, tough. And um, luckily, I think I've got a good balance on, on um, how to communicate and just know that men want to solve problems, but also to be that self-aware that, that you do have an issue that needs to be solved, it could be a relieving factor to men. But, but God bless them. They're 50% of our planet. And, uh, you know, um, they, 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 we got to love everyone. God bless you. Thank you for the question. Okay, now, question two from CS7182, prostate health. Okay, understand the prostate is an organ, okay, and it's located in the pelvic floor. So stabilizing the pelvis and making the pelvic healthy is going to be the key. This means, what are the clues of that? Well, if you have knee problems, ankle problems, bunions on the feet, this means that your gait is going to be off. 
And if your gait is off, that means the pelvis is going to be unstable. Plus, if you have a sedentary lifestyle or an um, exercise like bike riding, that can, the certain bicycle seats can damage the prostate. This is why I use recumbents where you have like a standard seat. Okay, it's fantastic, better for the prostate. Um, so look at a mechanical distortion for uh, contributing factors to abnormal prostate function. Now, clues, the prostate's job is to secrete fluid to give nourishment to the semen, but also it's to wall off the bladder. So if that prostate swells from either a mechanical distortion of compromised nerve supply to the pelvic floor or endocrine disruptors, okay, and these are hormones that, or they're chemicals that act kind of like hormones, but they're not hormones. And if you look at pesticides, a good hunk of the pesticides that we're exposed to are estrogen-based. Plastics can be estrogen-based and can negatively affect that. So look at toxic environmental exposure, and then look at all medications can damage the gut flora and damage mitochondria. So if people are taking medications for and cholesterol-lowering medications, those can are linked to prostate issues. Okay, Any time of damage to the gut flora, that's where a good hunk of your immune system is and also where neurotransmitters are produced. So there's a lot of clues to prostates not working correctly. So look at mechanical distortion first. Look at toxic environmental has the second. Then look at healthy exposure to nutrients. So good, healthy gut flora. Kegel exercises, okay, to utilize that. Prostate massage is going to be ideal. And that could be external massage or internal massage. There's a lot of different methods of doing that, some of which I can't explain here. We do explain on our site. But the prostate massage, Kegel exercises, healthy diet, diet high in healthy fats. And remember, unhealthy fats can damage the arteries. And you need good arterial flow for good penile and prostate function. So, so the toxic fats such as cottonseed oil, canola oil, soy oil, corn oil, those are all damaging to the arterial system. Um, you maintain healthy fats. Um, a diet has free of pesticides as you could possibly get it. Um, organic, healthy, natural food, stuff that your great-grandparents would recognize. And maintaining the health of that pelvis and maintaining the health of the gait, you're going to have a good, healthy prostate. Question three from J. Hook uh, 4828. Uh, what about taking the supplement creatinine for men's health? Creatinine is fantastic. Um, great, great nutrients from it. Collagen is also really, really good. Like Great Lakes gelatin is excellent, okay? But collagen supplements like hydrolyzed collagen, I get that ours from um, the Dr. With Insight from Dr. O'Shea. You know, collagen bone broth is going to be fantastic. That's going to be excellent. But also, when you're looking at men's health, work your muscles every day so you maintain that muscle mass. Um, vibration exercises such as walking, uh, vibratory plates are fantastic. Resistance as well as aerobic exercises, that's going to be great. But also know that physical, chemical, emotional stress decreases the stomach acid and that causes, it's, it's harder to get the amino acids from the proteins. So look at sleep pattern changes and look at um, emotional health, such as uh, neurolinguistic programming or emotional freedom technique or eye movement desensitization response. Master your emotions, you change the chemicals your brain secretes. Watching the environmental endocrine disruptors, such as plastics and pesticides, and hormone-laden meats. Those are also going to damage the health. But creatinine, uh, excellent, along with hydrolyzed collagen, which is excellent, along with bone broth, which is excellent. Question four. Charles um, Smokasolo 8708. I have a hip replacement on my left leg for more than four years now, but I have an ED problem. Erection is weak. What can I do? Excellent. Knowing that you've had a hip issue, it means your pelvis is going to be unstable. And that pelvis instability is going to damage how the pelvis functions. And in the pelvis, that houses half of the parasympathetic nervous system. What's the parasympathetic nervous system? That's the rest, digest, and repair. So you're also going to have poor sleep problems. But when we look at the autonomic nervous system, remember, half of that rest, digest, and repair is located in the pelvis. The other half is located in the upper cervical spine. So, and the brain. So, you're looking, that's why it's called cranial sacral. 
Um, parasympathetic is designed for the erection or the arousal. Sympathetic is designed for the ejaculation or the climax. So you have a parasympathetic dysfunction um, from a pelvic dysfunction for sure. But this is also knowing that you've had the hip replacement, you're going to have a chronic low-grade inflammatory response. So the, look at our pelvic health video. You want to get a trochanter support. You want to start doing some of the leg exercises, such as knee exercises, calf exercises. I totally recommend you getting to a corrective chiropractor, having them check the lumbar, thoracic, and cervical spine. Because if your body, for four years, your body is going to be shifting over to the right. And that's going to also create an, a major imbalance. Anytime we get somebody with a knee or hip replacement, their gait is completely altered. And so we have to reprogram their brain to walk correctly. And so reprogramming your gait, look at our pelvic health videos, stabilizing the pelvic, looking at lumbar issues, and also look at it lateral thoracic translation that can also change the force loading. And then look at sleep pattern changes and look at healing the gut because that's literally where neurotransmitters are produced. And you will get healthy. This can be corrected. But also avoid any toxic fats. No canola, soy, corn, cottonseed oil. Those things are toxic oils that can damage the arterial supply. Plus also not only parasympathetic nervous system, but a toxic blood can do it too. I'd recommend getting a live blood cell analysis because if you're in a chronic stress, the blood becomes thicker and that also will limit the blood flow as well. This is why cayenne supplements with meals I recommend. But, you know, really find out why. Okay, what, what's going on? Um, question five from user KK60V4PD2S. That's a heck of a name. Okay, my son is 20 and just started puberty last year. I think our family has a weak endocrine system. We've upped our fruits, fruits and veggies, and our health conscious are taking herbs and glandulars to support the endocrine system. He's super skinny and began suffering from hemorrhoids in the spring of 2023. Do you have any thoughts? Absolutely. You got to figure your son's being raised in an environment that human beings are not familiar with. 10,000 generations occurred before you, at least. And super skinny means he has a malabsorption issue. Knowing that he started to suffer hemorrhoids, we know that there's going to be a gastrointestinal issue or an absorptive issue. And since a good hunk of your hormones are made out of fats, it means that he's going to have uh, fatty, is having trouble breaking the fats down to fatty acids. So it's not a really a weak endocrine system. It has to do with his absorption of nutrients, producing those proteins, producing the correct hormones. And knowing that he didn't have a puberty until he was in his 20s, he had a severe endocrine exposure or, or endocrine disruptors. And these are going to be things that are like hormones, but not really hormones. So a lot of things in the environment, such as glyphosates, those are mineral chelators and a natural antibiotic. Looking at uh, pesticides, which are generally estrogen-based. Look at fast foods, which are massively laden with hormones. And then look at the dairy products, look at the meat products commercially produced. Those are dangerous. Look at bread products, okay, which are generally soaked in glyphosate. So he has an absorption issue and a toxic environmental exposure. So, and there's certain interventions that we can't even talk about here. But he, you got to heal the gut. You got to look at the physical, chemical, and emotional stress. Um, if he had ear infections as a child, that indicates that there could be an upper cervical problem or a cervical spine problem that could have happened at birth. If mom got Pitocin or an epidural, that could also create a, a secondary response to certain interventions that can create inflammation. Uh, and so look at his toxic environmental exposure, but luckily bodies are always in a regenerative um, capacity. Like you're uh, three times a year, every red blood cell you got is brand new. So your, your bones are brand new. Your skin is brand new. So it's a tissue production problem, which is what he has. And that's going to be from physical, chemical, emotional stress. So digital x-rays of his entire spine, central nervous system. Um, we've got to look at chemical stress and poor sleep is a chemical stressor. You know he's not sleeping good. Remember, there's high disease rates at nine hours or more sleep or five hours or less. And then the emotional component. Okay, address all three of those and he will start to thrive. Question six from 
Brian Deutsch, um, 6577. I have to go to the bathroom all night. I'm not sleeping very well. What food should I avoid? Also, I walk a mile and a half uh, barefooted, but I work in a call center. So I stayed all day. It probably said I sit all day. Uh, all I drink is water, black coffee, and unsweetened tea, but mainly water. My water comes from 60 from underground, probably 60 feet underground, and tastes better than Sprite. <laughs> Thank you so much, the end of November. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're talking good, good spring water is like freaking amazing. I'm with you there. Make sure the black coffee is organic, okay? And unsweet, nice tea. Make sure the tea is, is organic. Going to the bathroom all night has to do with your sleep patterns interrupted. Your body goes through 90-minute cycles called rapid eye movement or REM state of sleep. And this is when you are in a coma, okay, where, where 100% of your energy is going to that revitalization. When you complete that cycle, your eyes literally open, then they close. This is why we recommend eye coverings. Now, and you've got to have eye coverings that you're going to open and close your eyes with. Manta eye shades are some of the best, okay? Um, but there's a lot of different brands out there. Um, so you've got to take out the visual component. Then you have to take out the auditory component. Um, a white noise application on your phone set at 528 hertz. And this is going to be rain or ocean or just like just static. Set your cell phone more than three foot away from your head, but that'll take out the auditory influence. Prepare your mind for sleep by journaling and reading. Okay, limit your sleep to six hours a night for 21 days. And what that's going to do is reset your circadian rhythm. Just know that lack of sleep has a similar effect as alcohol. The walking barefoot is fantastic. Since you're sitting down a lot of times during the day, look at our, for sure, look at our sleep videos because I go over that sleep pattern change in great detail. Look at our pelvic health videos because there's certain things you can do using a water bottle or a foam piece 20 minutes in, 10 minutes out to change sitting into therapy as well. And you have look forward to meeting you in November too. God bless you. Now, um, if your question wasn't answered in this video, visit the drbvip.com site. We're also going to have our uncensored answers there too. I'll respond to the, the rest of the questions there. I won't have to censor my response because uh, literally of the controllers that are controlling social media. And it's not just the YouTube controllers. Uh, we're getting in trouble for stuff that we post on BitChute, TikTok, um, everything. So. Um, uh, God bless you all, and if your questions weren't answered yet, they will be on Dr. B VIP.